In the same way, say same way, (laughs) by faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems. The Acts 1-8 power wasn't just for preaching the gospel. It was for helping us with our daily problems. Not enough money to pay the bills, broken relationship with children, broken relationship with parents, broken relationships with siblings, broken relationships with people on the job, job problems, school problems, social problems. Come on! He helps us with every problem. And he has promised, if you'll trust him, wait patiently, with confidence, He's going to restore everything of the years of loss. Open your Bibles to the book of Joel, and I'll give you time to find... Joel. It's just a small little book in the Bible. You can look in the very beginning of your Bible in the book of contents, and it'll tell you what page it's on. But I want to talk to us this morning about restoring the years. We've been in a theme since the beginning of the year about the blessing of God. How many have ever heard a sermon on the anointing? Well, the anointing is an external manifestation of God's presence and power that can come and go and ebb and flow. How many have heard of the favor of God? Well, that oftentimes, the favor of God is for specific situations. Yes, it's true you can walk in the favor of God, but generally the favor of God is manifest in specific situations. But the blessing, say the blessing. The blessing comes upon us as a child of God. How many love Jesus with all your heart? You've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says he gives you the power to become a son of God. And and the word son there is not talking about a, a gender. It's talking about the relationship of inheritance. We become a joint heir of Christ. We have literally been adopted into the family of God with all full rights and privileges. And we've even had a name change because we have been adopted into the family of God. How many think that's a good deal? What a deal. Now, in Joel chapter 2, I'm going to use the New Living Translation. We'll have it up on the screen so you can follow along. Beginning in verse 19. Look, I am sending you grain and new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy your needs. You will no longer be an object of mockery among the surrounding nations. I will drive away these armies from the north. I will send them into the parched wastelands. Those in the front will be driven into the Dead Sea and those in the rear into the Mediterranean. And the stench of their rotting bodies will rise over the land. Isn't that a beautiful Mother's Day scripture right there? (laughs) Surely the Lord has done great things. Now don't be afraid, O land. Be glad now and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Notice the present tense of the scripture, and this is a promise that is coming to the Israelites. They've been overrun by their enemies from the north. They're exhausted. They're weary. They've just been totally devastated, and the prophet is saying, The Lord has done great things. It hasn't happened yet, visually, experientially, but the prophet has declared it is done. Amen? Now, verse 21, don't be afraid, O land. 
Be glad now. Be glad now. Be glad now. Today. And rejoice. For again I say, the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field, for the wilderness pastures will soon be green. The trees will again be filled with fruit. Fig trees and grapevines will be loaded down once more. Rejoice, you people of Ignited Church. Amen. Rejoice. This is a promise from God. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rain he sends demonstrates his faithfulness. Say faithfulness. God is a faithful God. You can trust him. He keeps his word. Once more, the autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring. The threshing floors will once again be piled high with grain. And the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts. And the swarming locusts represented both natural enemies as well as spiritual enemies, as well as emotional enemies, anything that has come in to take away what belongs to you is represented by these locusts. Verse 26, once again, notice all these words that represent restoration. Once again, you will have all the food you want and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Come on, say praise the Lord. Then you will know that I am among my people that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. And again, he says, never again will my people be disgraced. Now, I want you to look again at verse 25. For those with the King James Version, it says, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The Living Bible says, I will give you back the crops that the locust ate. The Amplified says, I will compensate you for the years that the locust has eaten. The the good word translation said, I will repay you for the years that the locust have eaten. Now, I know this all sounds a little strange. Why are you preaching this on Mother's Day? But this is what... I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. As I was preparing for this message, I recognized the fact that today we do honor our mothers. A big article was written about the lady who actually started Mother's Day back in the early 1900s. Towards the end of her life, she became very disturbed by the fact that we made it so commercial. Did you know that on Mother's Day, we literally spend hundreds of millions of dollars on everything from flowers to cards to chocolates and all these different kind of things. She despised the fact that we commercialized it. She said, I just wanted people to honor their mothers for one day. That's all I wanted. Well, I personally think that that was a little overkill on her part, but yet at the same time, I I read the article with interest that yes, it's more important just to honor our mothers, even those that have gone on, it's important that we do that, and we don't have to spend a lot of money, they just want to know that they're loved, and to have one day out of the year that, 
you make that phone call or you send that card or those flowers or whatever you do, they, they would just want to hear from you. To say, I love you, Mom, and a big hug. Amen? Mothers, do you agree? I realize that there are those seated here today that maybe you had an incredible relationship with your mom. I did. I know my wife did with her mom. But there are others here that you did not have so great a relationship with your mom. There are mothers here today that you had an outstanding relationship with your children. And there are others here that even today you've, there's, this, there's an estrangement there for whatever reason. There are some wives here today that had an incredible relationship with your Spouse, and then there's others here. You had a very, very difficult time. But this is the word of the Lord that He gave me back in January of 2017, and I just can't shake it. The word is today, everything changes. Everything changes. Now, why can I say that with such confidence and with such conviction? Because of our scripture text today. Notice that in the midst of their suffering and their discouragement and pain and lack, the prophet has the nerve to say, Thus saith the Lord, this is the last day you will be without. This is the last day that you will be in shame. This is the last day that your enemy can overrun you. Come on, somebody. Today, God begins the restoration process. Say process. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Today begins, God begins to restore the years. Notice the emphasis on years. It isn't just one bad hair day. We're talking about some of you have gone through years of lack, years of pain, suffering, years. God begins today. To pay you back for the years of lack caused by the circumstances of life. Lack of finances. Lack of health. You know, the enemy of our soul, he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. He takes your money. He takes your health. Lack of positive emotions. I mean, when's the last time... You really had a happy day. All day long, just happy, full of joy. Today, God begins to restore the years of tears. The lack of peace in your home. How long has it been since you've come home and felt his peace? Today, he begins to restore the years of the dysfunction, of the frustration, the lack of good and strong and healthy relationships, friendships, lack of good relationships with your parents or good relationships with your children. Today, everything changes. I'm declaring it to you just like the prophet Joel declared it to the people of God thousands of years ago. Why can I do this? Because it is the character of God. It's the character of God. How many know somebody who's just a habitual liar? You can't trust a word they say. Come on, if their lips are moving, they're lying. How many know somebody like that? How many got somebody in your family like that? 
You just know you can't trust what they say. They can be telling you the most wonderful, positive news, and you just smile and say, that's good, because you know they're lying. But if God says it, if God said, even if God said something that wasn't true before he said it, the moment he said it, it becomes true. Because <laughs> as soon as he speaks it, it manifests. God is into restoration. If we repent, if we forgive, if we draw nigh to God, He draws near to us. If we seek Him with our whole mind, body, will, and strength, He's a God of restoration. And that's what I felt like was the word for today to especially moms that have got those years of their life when they had to sacrifice and give up things. I, I was even pondering this. How many years did Jan and I go through a Christmas where we just didn't have enough and so we worked it out with each other. Let's not get each other gifts. We can do that later in the year. Let's just put it all into the kids. How many have ever made that decision? How many still having to make that decision? And God's promise in his word. Come on, hold up your word right there, whether it's digital or paper. This, we're holding God's word. He's a covenant God. When God says it, it's in blood. It's a blood covenant. It isn't just a promise. This is a blood covenant. The strongest covenant on the whole planet is a blood covenant. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become brand new. That's his promise. It's, it's his covenant. The very last words of Jesus to his disciples. This morning for the offering time, we read parts of one of Jesus' famous sermons where he, where the heading over that chapter, Luke 6, says these are the most important things. Well, in the book of Acts chapter 1, you can turn there if you'd like. In Acts chapter 1, this was Jesus' final words to his disciples. How many think his final words were very important? And they were literally discussing the thoughts about the kingdom of God. And the disciples, after three years of Bible school, still did not comprehend what Jesus was trying to communicate. He says, okay, guys, let me, let me just spell it out for you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, New Living Translation, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you're going to get power. It's going to give you understanding. It's going to give you wisdom. It's going to give you the ability that you need to communicate what I've taught you, what I've trained you all these years. I'm going to give you power. And so then, about, what was it, 10, 11 days later, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. No, it was longer than that. How many days? 50 days. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, that's when the Holy Spirit came in power. Now, interestingly, I didn't catch it until this morning as I was reviewing my notes. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And, 
And Alexis chose the song, The Comforter Has Come, this morning to prepare us for next Sunday. And here it was, one of my lead text scriptures for today. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. And we're going to celebrate that next weekend. The Amplified Version, verse 8, Amplified. You will receive power, and that word power is dunamis in the Greek, and it means ability. You will receive ability when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It means efficiency. That that word efficiency means greater energy. Does anybody need more energy? Greater energy. Greater productivity. Greater effectiveness. That's what's included in that word. You will Receive power. You will receive greater effectiveness. And it also includes the word might. And the word might means impressive strength. Impressive strength. How many have ever heard the stories of like, A mother is in the house and she hears the screeching of tires and she hears people screaming and she runs out into the front to find her little baby underneath the wheels of a car and she goes over to the car and just goes and lifts up the car. How many have heard those stories? What happened to her? She got a surge of adrenaline. God has adrenaline that's in our bodies It's a natural function when we get into a fearful situation. But what Jesus is saying is, I'm going to give you supernatural, impressive power. Woo! Now, yes, I know in the context of the Scripture... I can hear you theologians thinking it through. In the context of the scripture, yes, he was talking about spreading the gospel. And how many realize that those 120 people that had gathered in the upper room literally turned the then known world upside down and thousands and thousands and thousands of people were swept into the kingdom of God, literally. And then in the early 1900s, when Pentecost was revisited again in a little tiny rundown former horse stable called the Mission on Azusa Street, the Azusa Street Mission, run by a black, one eyed, illiterate preacher who would walk into the pulpit and literally put his head underneath a basket on the floor like this. He'd put the basket over his head and he would pray while the choir sang, the comforter has come. And they, he would make them sing it till the Holy Spirit showed up. And soon it broke out into a 24 hour a day for three years revival. That is what we're celebrating next week. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? Power. Dunamis. Where we get the word dynamite. It's miraculous strength. The ability to do miracles. It is the ability to do the impossible. That's why I can stand here and tell you by the Holy Spirit, because of the spirit of faith that's in me, today everything changes. You have to believe God's word. You just have to believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
If we could just snap our fingers and make something happen, we wouldn't need faith. You got to have faith because things don't appear to be as God's word promises. Look at Romans chapter 8. I'm going to use the the Living Bible. Haven't used that in a long time. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 16. For his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are children of God. We really are. I really am a child of God. And since we are his children, we share his treasures. Jan and I were watching this little documentary yesterday, just relaxing, eating a little bit, and watching this documentary about the royal family. And they were talking about Diana, and they were talking about, who's this girl, Markle? What's her first name? Meghan. Meghan Markle. And she's about to marry Prince Harry, Prince Harry. How many know what I'm talking about? How many could care less about the royal family? How many watch the Kardashians? I was trying to trick you right there. All right. So Meghan Markle, I didn't know this until the documentary. She's actually mixed in her race. I didn't know that. She'll be the first one of a mixed race to come into the royal family. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because when they're married, she becomes royalty. And she has access to the crown jewels. Can you imagine? The very next day, she can walk into the treasury room and choose those diamonds, ladies, that look so sparkly with those bright, shiny lights in Gordon's jewelers. And you can put them right there. The day before, they weren't hers. Today, the next day after the marriage, they're hers. Because she becomes royalty because of a marriage covenant. Are you listening? See, it doesn't matter what your background is. And she's had a very difficult background. But the day she walks down that aisle and becomes married to Harry, the prince, she becomes royalty, a joint heir. What, what's Harry uh, third in line of succession to the throne? Oh, fifth or sixth? But she's in line for the throne. Do you, do you understand? She's, she becomes in line. with. She could be the queen because of a marriage contract. You and I have something greater. Come on, lift it up again. Hold it in your hands. You have something greater than a marriage contract. You have the word of God. All, look at that scripture again. Since we are his children, we share his treasures for all God gives to his son Jesus is now ours also. Woo, 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 woo. Man, think about that. All God gives to his son Jesus is now. Say now. Now. It's ours too. You say, well, I know, you know, when we get to heaven someday. No, 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 no. It's today. I'm royalty today. I'm a king's kid today, right now. I now, today, 
have access to all treasures. Today, everything changes. Believe this. Receive this. Get it deep into your heart. Did the, the woman with the issue of blood, she, she didn't have anything in writing. All she had was she had heard the stories of how that if Jesus touched people, they would be healed. So she keeps saying to herself, why did she say it to herself? Because sometimes you got to convince the man in the mirror. Right? You've got to convince that person you're looking at in the mirror. Sometimes you need to hear it over and over and over again. Sometimes it takes a while for it to sink from your head down into the heart. God loves you. God's in a good mood. Today is a day of jubilee. Jubilee means total freedom from all debt. Today, according to the prophet Joel, in the last days I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. It's white flesh, black flesh, Indian flesh, brown flesh. Come on. Tattooed flesh, pierced flesh, old flesh, young flesh. Come on, fat flesh, skinny flesh. Come on. Mixed flesh. Confused flesh. Have you watched those TV commercials, Ancestry.com or whatever it is, and, and you, you take a swab in your mouth and you send it off to them and they tell you what your genealogy is or whatever. And the guy that comes on, he says, all my life I thought I was German. He said, uh, you know, we did all kinds of things German. We learned about German food and German culture and everything. He said, we drank German beer. We just, everything was German. And then I did the Ancestry.com and found out I was Scottish. So I've cha- traded in my German stuff for my kilt. So he's standing there in a kilt. That's confused flesh. My dad tells a story about how one time he went back in his genealogy and found out that the Straters had come all the way from West Virginia. And he started getting farther and farther in the family tree and found out his, his people lived in trees up in West Virginia. And he says, I stopped right there. I wasn't going back any farther. <clears throat> Some of us don't really need to know where we came from. I, I, I found out that on my mom's side, we came from the McClarney clan from Ireland. And, and, and our ancestors came to New York and General Custer went to New York and hired all of the Irishmen, I, I don't know how many hundreds of them, to go and fight Indians for two years and then I'll give you land. And my ancestors were in that wagon train. And my great, 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 great grandmother was in that wagon train while her husband went off to war and they were all killed. There were only two Irishmen left. And those were the two cooks that had stayed there at the camp to take care of the women and children. And my grandmother, great, 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 great grandmother married one of the McClarney men. And that's where we came from. I learned all of that. Now, to be honest with you, it doesn't really affect me. (laughs) Because I got a new name. I got a new name. I'm, I'm royal blood that's made up of Irish and German and Scottish and African and Indian and Chinese. 
Chinese, Japanese, and American needs. I mean, I, whatever you are. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because you're a child of God. Come on, take five seconds thinking. You're a child of God. <clears throat> look, at, look at Romans 8.24 from the Living Bible. This is so cool. We are saved by trusting and hoping. Nothing wrong with hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Trusting means looking forward to getting something we don't yet have. The prophet Joel prophesied it, but it didn't actually happen for thousands of years, literally. For a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he will get it. But if we must keep trusting God for something that hasn't happened yet, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. I got the confident part. It's that patient part that irritates me. How many are just a little bit impatient? I mean, just a little bit. The prophet says, thus saith the Lord, and it hasn't happened yet. How many just want to put some stones in your pocket, and the next person that prophesies, you want to stone them? In the same way, say same way, by faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems. The Acts 1-8 power wasn't just for preaching the gospel. It was for helping us with our daily problems. Not enough money to pay the bills, broken relationship with children, broken relationship with parents, broken relationships with siblings, broken relationships with people on the job, job problems, school problems, social problems. Come on. He helps us with every problem. And he has promised, if you'll trust him, wait patiently with confidence He's going to restore everything of the years of loss. Have faith in God. Look at Mark 11. Mark 11 is like the faith chapter. I encourage you. I love to read Mark 11 in the Living Bible. I'll use the New Living Translation this morning just for brevity. Jesus said to his disciples, have faith in God. Now, look at this. Look at this. Jesus says, now, listen, I'm telling you the truth. Now, how many have had people say, hey, listen, I'm just being honest with you. Or, hey, I'm trying to tell you the truth here. And, and you're thinking, you're not being my friend. Because you can tell if their lips are moving, they're lying. But this isn't that one. This is Jesus I'm telling you the truth. And he looks around and he says, the Mount of Olives. They're standing right there in the Mount of Olives. He says, you can say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. Why? Because Acts 1-8, power is the ability to do the impossible. But you've got to really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. And after he says it, he says, wait a minute, listen, I'm telling you the truth. Today, everything changes. He said, prior to this, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Really? Really believe that it will happen. I tell you, you can pray for anything. You can ask for anything. If you really believe it, that you have received it, it will be yours. 
Now, these are the words of Christ. I'm just telling you. And that's why I can stand here and tell you with confidence and faith, if you can grab this message this morning, today, everything changes. Verse 24 in the Amplified. I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, be confident that it's granted to you and you will get it. Verse 24, the Passion Translation. This is the reason that I urge you boldly believe. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it's yours. These are the words of Jesus. The word of God is filled with promises. It's filled with promises. How many ever sang the song? Every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line, da, 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 da. How many have ever sang that song? Boy, you sure are old because the last time I sang it, I fell off my dinosaur. But today we're focusing on this promise that God is going to restore the years that the enemy has stolen from us. The years that the locusts have eaten. Today, God begins the process of paying you back. Compensating you restoring to you the years the lack was caused by the circumstances of of life. You got to believe it. Even though you can't see it with the natural eye, you got to believe it. God's word is just filled with fine print. And normally when we say those words, we think of fine print as gotcha. How how many, you know, should have read the fine print before you signed the contract. How many have heard that? But this fine print is different. This fine print is designed to help you to achieve the abundant life. Help you to get access to the treasures of God. Help you to understand what it means now that you're a child of God. The fine print is designed to connect you to the promise and to receive the fullness of the promise. The fine prints in, in God's word are powerful. Now, let me give you an example. How many believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that when you pray, God hears your prayers. I mean, you believe that. He at least hears them. How many at least are confident God hears your prayers? But yet his fine print says, if you're unkind to your wife, your prayers are hindered. That's in the fine print. It's not there to tell you or condemn you or to keep the promise from you. The fine print is there to help you get your prayers answered. So it says, now, by the way, I've just told you, anything you ask for, you're going to get it. But if you're unkind to your spouse, your prayers are going to be hindered. So don't do that. How many think that's a good good thing? Oh, ladies, say amen. Hallelujah. All right, here's another one. Children, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. You have long life that the favor of God be on your life. It's not there to keep you from the favor of God. It's there to release the favor of God. Just be nice. Be nice to mama. Honor and respect your father, even if he doesn't deserve it. Even if he has abused you and kicked you, just give honor to whom honors do. Just be nice doesn't mean you have to let them into your life, but you've just got to just be kind to them. Be kind to those that hurt you. Be kind to them. Love your enemies. I'm just telling you how to get to the treasures of God. 
Now, this is, this is a tougher one, but it's in the fine print. The disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? Heavenly Father, forgive me my transgressions as I forgive those who have transgressed against me. If you want the blessing, you've got to forgive. It doesn't mean you have to let that person back into your life. Doesn't mean you even have to trust them. Never said that. Doesn't mean you have to be all gushy, lovey-dovey, sloppy, agape. It just means you got to forgive them and walk away. Say, God, they're your problem, not mine. And you just forgive. If we have these details out of order, we can't be in sync with the promise. Dad used to put it this way. He said, every promise has conditions that have to be met. We cannot experience the fullness of these valuable promises if something is not hooked up properly, if something's out of sync. So one of the reasons why we come to church and gather like this is so that the preacher can tell us about some of the fine print. You wondered what I was good for. All scripture is given by God for inspiration, for motivation, but it's also for correction and it's also for instruction. How many saw the new sign up today? We ordered this new sign a year ago. Our sign was, was getting old. It was about 12 years old, and it was only really designed to last about 10 years, and we knew that it would wear out after about 10 years. But we had already stretched the life of the sign 12 years, and he was getting faded and so forth. And I said, Pastor Jan, I have to tell you, I'm embarrassed about that sign So when we refinanced the church, she asked the bank to give us some extra money, about $100,000, so that we could replace the sign. You say, boy, that's a lot of money. Yes, but 55,000 cars a day go by that sign. It's one of the most effective visual tools that we have to attract people into the church. And so spread out over 10 years, that's 10 grand a year. That's less than $1,000 a month. And any businessman in here of any substance will tell you $1,000 a month of advertising is nothing. Did, Did you follow that? So we get the money. And I'm ready to order the new sign. And Pastor Jan says, "Uh, no, I feel like we're supposed to wait. And I said, wait? We just got the money. She says, no, I feel like we should wait. And I've learned, as much as I regret having to say this, that when she gets in that zone and tells me something, I better listen. So we waited one month, two months, and here comes Hurricane Irma. And I'm praying, Jesus, wipe out that sign in the name of Jesus. Let that hurricane. But you remember the weatherman said, no, it's going way off to the east. And then it says, no, it's going to go way off to the west. And in the meantime, Jan and I are at a conference up in Kentucky. And guess where we visited? Noah's Ark. That's where we were. When the hurricane hit Lakeland, we were in Noah's Ark. How funny is that? So we kept calling how things going, how things going. We didn't realize till the next day that Hurricane Irma shifted at the last second and hit Lakeland head on. Did you all know that? The eye of the storm actually came over Lakeland. Well, make a long story short, it ripped off the sides of the sign. The water got in and damaged the electronics beyond repair. Raise your hand right now and say, thank you, Jesus, for good insurance. (laughs) So, we ordered the new sign because the insurance was going to cover most of it. 
We wanted the latest, greatest upgrades and so forth, so we only had to pay the difference, about 30% of the cost. So praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we ordered the sign. We signed the contract. The moment we signed the contract, we have a new sign. Did you hear me? Follow this illustration. Don't get lost. The moment we signed the contract, we now have a new sign. But when you look out the front door, the sign's still broken. It's ruined. It's, the electronics are being goofy and the sides are all slapped together. But we have a new sign. So we had to go through the process of getting a new sign. We actually have a new sign, but it's all on paper in the contract. Are you, how many are with me? So then the next thing that happens, the installers come in and they tear down the old sign. They have to tear it down. They have to dismantle it. And we're looking out there and all we got is this rusty old cruddy shell of angle iron and wires hanging out like this. And... But we got a new sign. You can't be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by faith in what you know and who you know. So then they tell us, well, now you got to purchase a laptop, put this special software on it because this is a brand new sign. We've got brand new software. You got to do it. So now I have to go out. Forgive me, Lord. I had to buy a PC. Oh, man, I just feel sin every time I touch the keys of that PC because I'm an Apple guy. You understand? So I get the PC and I'm having to relearn how it goes. And of all things, I mean, when I gave up my PC, I had Windows 98. (laughs) And the new one's got Windows 10. And I'm going, oh my God, who invented this mess? (laughs) So I had to learn a whole new language. Are Are you tracking with me? I had to learn something new. I had to reprogram the way I think because an Apple, everything's on the left and on a PC, everything's on the right and it's backwards and oh. Because the PC is right. Yeah, PC's right, my eye. <laughs> so now the installers come and they repair some things and they rebuild some things and they replace some things. They restore the foundation of the original sign that was for Scotty's lumber back in the 70s. And they put in new lights instead of those yucky fluorescent lights that turn green and flicker. We've got beautiful, like, thousand-watt LED lights that just... (laughs) And then they installed the new electronics. Boy, that electric sign, the display is like three times as bright. And it just, just, I mean, it just snap, crackles, pops. I mean, it's just the bomb. (laughs) So now I had to go through the process of syncing the laptop with the modem that's out there at the sign. And the modem has to sync to the controller that then sends the information to the electronic sign. We have a beautiful sign out there, but I can't talk to it. I can't access it until I get everything in sync. Are you tracking? I have it. I can see it hanging out there. I can see it all beautiful and everything. This week they're coming in, putting in the outer skin and going to paint everything. It looks all nice. So Friday morning at 9.30, I sit down at the computer right out there at the front desk. 
And I start making phone calls, and, and I end up talking to four different tech companies. I ended up talking to four different computer experts. I mean, I called Dr. Randy over here because he's an Apple and PC specialist. I mean, his brain's really confused. And, and so he's w- helping me work on it. And I call Mark, my, my brother-in-law. He, Randy runs the Apple division of Publix. Mark runs the PC division of of Publix, and even Mark and Randy can't figure it out. And so I call Chris, my buddy who who works for Apple, but is also a PC specialist. He can't figure it out. I'm calling everybody. I'm texting everybody from 9.30 in the morning till 8.30 Friday night. I never left the front desk except to go across the street to CVS and get me a coffee. I am doing everything I can to access the promise. Are you tracking with me? I've got the promise. It's sitting right out there. Now I can actually see the promise, but I can't access it because I've got to get everything in sync. I had to have the static IP, and I had to have all the little programs in there. You know, oh, buddy, this this. ID had to talk to this ID, and this ID had to talk to this ID, and I'm, I'm on the phone. And I even, I literally programmed this thing called Team Viewer so the guys, the tech guys in California could literally log onto my computer. And I'm sitting there watching my computer, and it's moving all around. The cursor's going places, and they're clicking things and changing things. I even got the original programmer of the software going through my computer and clicking this and changing that. And I'm watching it happen. But I still can't access the promise. Finally, they figured it out. There's no cable from the modem to the sign. And I'm going, what do you mean there's no cable? So I call the installer, and he talks to his installer that works for him, Marco, and he says, Marco, did you plug that thing in? He says, yes, sir, I did. I plugged it in. I plugged it right where they told me to. Now, he said, the instructions told me to plug it on the right, but that didn't work, so we plugged it in the left. And he goes, oh, no, you were supposed to plug it in the right. So I'm sitting there for two and a half hours waiting for a lift truck to come all the way from Tampa, comes over here. He goes up there in the bucket. He opens it up and and he hooks the wire and and it works. (laughs) It works. I can now talk to the sign. So I get back on the phone with California, and I said, look, we never got the training on this thing because your training guy, he's been sick for a month. I said, we've never gotten training. Can you at least tell me how to get something on the sign for Mother's Day? And that's when we got the slide up there that says, Happy Mother's Day. But that's all I could get up there. I couldn't get anything else up there. So I went home Friday night exhausted. I can finally access the sign, but it's still not the fullness of the promise. Are you tracking with me? I'm not talking about signs. I'm talking about signs and wonders. I'm talking about you getting the fullness of the contract. When Jesus said, it is finished, he said, it's finished. We now have, according to the contract, all things restored. Today, everything changes. But you still have to go through the process of the finalization of it. Saturday morning, I woke up and I said, I got this brand new sign. And thank God it says Happy Mother's Day on it. But I'm not satisfied. I want the fullness of what that sign is supposed to do. So I went through the whole training video again. I sat there. I worked on it. I hit the button. And it sent off the five slides that you see up there today. But I wasn't satisfied yet. I wanted to see it. So I got in my car. I'm still in my PJs. I get in my car and I drive right down here. I'm sitting in front of the church in my 
you know, my shorts and t-shirt. And Jan said, are you sure you want to be seen looking like that? I mean, that's what she said to me. But I said, I'll be in the car. I'm fine. I got to go see it. And I sat out in front of the church. And it was a good thing I did because I had made a mistake and the lines were going this way. And she, So I sat in front of the church and I reprogrammed it a third time and got it to look like it does today. And it's still only at 50% capacity. Tomorrow, I'm getting the training to get it up to 100%. Now, that's where we are in the Word of God. We've got the contract. We've signed the contract. For as many as received him, to them give he the power to become. You're the child of God. But you're not experiencing all the promise because you don't have everything in sync and lined up. That's why you're here today, and I'm closing with this, and I really mean it because I'm starting to get hungry. We all have been given the promise, all of us. But we have to get the instructions correct. Everything's got to be hooked up. Everything's got to be in sync. Everything's got to be in harmony. Prayer, fasting, studying the Word, worship, seeking God. First, he's got to have first place. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things and being right. And all of these things will be added unto you. We've got to learn to hear God's voice. Each one of those pieces of electronics from my laptop to the modem to the controller to the sign all had to speak the same language. If one little number was shifted or missing, they couldn't talk to each other. It had to be perfect. You say, man, I can't ever get anything perfect. Like, Yes, you can because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you the ability to do the impossible. Proverbs 2, for the Lord grants wisdom. His every word is a treasure of knowledge and understanding. He grants good sense to the godly, his saints. He is their shield, protecting them and guarding their pathway. He shows them how to distinguish right from wrong, how to make the right decision every time. Wisdom and truth will enter the very center of your being, filling your life with joy. Yes, if you want better insight and discernment and are searching for them as you would for lost money or a hidden treasure, wisdom will be given you and knowledge of God himself. I love that illustration. Can you seek God at least with the same passion that you seek for your lost keys in your house? How many have ever lost your keys in your house? You can't find them anywhere. They're not where they normally are. You've looked everywhere and you can't find them. How many have ever turned your house upside down looking for your keys? That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. We're not talking brain surgery here, people. We're talking about just seek God's Word, make sure everything is hooked up right, and you'll get the promise. Does that help anybody? Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to repent. First thing, every one of us in this room has sinned. The Bible says, all have sinned, fallen short of the glory. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's not a hard thing to do. Just right now in our hearts, let's just say it. Say, Heavenly Father, come inside me. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me. Change me. If there's anything missing, put it in me. Anything shouldn't be there. Take it out. In Jesus' name. And then the next, 
thing we have to hook up is to forgive. Now, boy, on Mother's Day, you look back, and there's a lot of stuff that's happened. A lot of things have gone down. A lot of water has gone under the bridge even since last year. But can you honestly say, dear Jesus, come on, say it, dear Jesus, help me. And right now, I forgive everybody, every situation, every misunderstanding. I choose to forgive. Help me to forgive. In Jesus' name. Now see, it wasn't that hard, was it? Just everything getting in alignment. And there's more steps, but wow, you just took two huge steps in getting the fullness of the promise. Amen? Amen? Amen?